Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're back behind my favorite 9 mil at Gunleshy 2, chasing those ASMR impact thuds while collecting data for our ongoing educational series on the effectiveness of different 9 mil ammo on critters chewing holes in my house and property. The goal is a safe and humane dispatch, and depending on your perspective, this 9 mil might be overkill, or might be just right. You guys are going to answer that down for me in the comments. Uh, if you're new here, first off, smash that like button, uh, and then let me know that you stopped by uh, down in the comments. But for your information, we collect this educational video data through three GoPro cameras sitting down range, and a fourth through the Eagle Vision GoPro scope cam mount sitting on my Leshy 2 itself, which today is the March Optics 4.5 by 28 wide angle with their High Master lens. Damn! I found a few tins of the 9mm poly mags in a drawer, and after removing those pointless red plastic tips, they fit the Leshy 2 magazine perfectly. So these pellets are like a tenderizer in other sizes, so I can't wait to see what they do uh, in 9mm. Well, uh, I'd say they're consistent uh, with the other calibers. Oh my god, look at the impact on this. Wow. I think I forgot to seal the paint or something because you could see that first shot, the little red tracer from the paint was gone, but that one was perfect. Weird. Next out was this guy, and I stuck with just a single shot, but this was just an absolute dart. Oh man, that was perfect. Jeez, you can see the fur just fly off its head. Oh. God, that slow-mo side angle is just a crazy. But watch from the top here, and you're really going to see. Look at those eyes. Listen, that pressure's got to go somewhere, and the eyeballs just fly out. That's when you know you hit it just dead center. Sticking with the single-shot darts, this one just absolutely freezes this guy on impact. Man, things got a little messy on this one, especially on stage right. Watch this angle. Oh, I'm like dodging it as I'm watching. I was actually able to retrieve the pellet on this one. Look at the expansion on these guys. It's just like a cast iron like pan hitting them. Jeez. Yeah, that angle. Holy crap. I was actually able to retrieve uh, the pellet on this one as well. This was a total pass through and it just lands right behind them on the table for one. You'll actually really be able to see it go all the way through here on this angle right here. Look at it, just land right there. Let's go grab this thing and check it out. Man, just like the other one, the expansion on these things is just absolutely incredible. This thing looks like a mushroom. That's got to be half the height. Wow. I'm going to send one more here, and then i got to show you something absolutely rad that arrived the other day. Man, the impact. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's just dead instantly, and that's what you want. A little off to the right, but that's okay. These giant 9 mil, let alone hollow point pellets, yeah, that's lights out. A great tool arrived for the squirrel was, and I wanted to show you guys before I did a deep dive on this thing. It's the Hemiway Cobra D7. On paper, this thing's got some amazing upgrades from the Cobra model that I've been hunting with over the past year. But I'll be doing an extended overview here soon as part of a spring hunting trip uh, to the farm in a few weeks. But that's why I want to show it to you guys. So far, I'm loving this rig, but I'm kind of on the fence of whether I want to put onboard storage on the bike or just run like a clean backpack and have everything that I need in there. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. These guys have tons of accessories for the bike. 
Uh, and I'm kind of leaning towards, though, just backpack and maybe a gun rack. A couple of quick things I noticed so far. First is the motor. The D7 features an upgraded 1,000 watt from a 750 watt motor that delivers just smoother acceleration overall uh, and then definitely a lot more robust in the hill climbing power. Uh, the original Cobra had a pretty plush ride. I wouldn't call it uncomfortable by any means, but the D7, I found it to be a lot more comfortable, uh, which I think comes from two things. First, they upgraded the front and rear suspension, and then second, they redesigned the frame, which absorbs the bumps better, uh, and it definitely provides a more stable and comfortable ride. I noticed it immediately, especially at slower speeds when I was riding with one hand uh, to test that out, which you do a lot in the woods uh, when you're out hunting with these things. If you're interested in checking these guys out, use my link and promo code in the description to snag a great deal. Now, let's get back to delivering those 9mm pills. The front entry was pretty clean, but that exit, man, that was something else. Once it hit the ground, though, it just emptied out. Definitely not a YouTube-friendly scene, so we're going to move on. That last shot was a little bit off, so I picked a spot on the duck sill here to make a minor correction to my zero. Uh, and there was a squirrel just sitting right above the target. He practically invited himself to the party. And thanks to the whisper quiet behemoth suppressor on the slushy too, it was a backyard banquet with no complaints from the neighbors. Noise wise, this thing's actually pretty backyard friendly. I mean, listen, I'm not gonna plink all day with my nine mil, but three to four kill shots, no problem. I ran out of Mr. Hollow Point Slug, so I'm back to the Hades on this shot. But man, the 9mm SG2 just absolutely loves these things. As you'll see from this Popeye shot, that happens when you hit them just dead nuts. As we move around to the different angles, you can see just how much energy is being dumped into this squirrel. Take away that these things are like a blender on the inside, I think just the blunt trauma would be enough for a humane dispatch. But wait until you see the last two shots though. The blender effect, well, that wasn't just for the inside. You know, I'll give you a little sneak peek to those last few shots right now. Because the uh, mild winter, man, it brought out more than just some early blooms. A chipper ventured out. And well, let's just say, uh, we put it back to uh, hibernation. Chipmunks can be a little nutty, even a bit cheeky at times, but remember, this is all in the name of nature's balance, or lack thereof in my yard, where I'm forced to keep the numbers in check or pay the price, literally. This next one watered the fence a bit, but I guess that's what happens when you dome a tree rat with 113 foot-pounds. Yuck. That fence is definitely going to be pretty ripe if it uh, doesn't rain. If you're a data nut, this new FX chronograph, man, this thing checks all the boxes. I got it for some long range shooting at the farm where I need some help uh, dialing in some ammo or picking the right ammo for some uh, upcoming new guns that I'm going to be showcasing here soon. Sometimes a 9mm makes them look like that squirrel from the Ice Age. And other times, it just removes the insides with a clean entry and exit. But the Hades belt is about the size of their eye. So this one went right through both and left nothing but a little wind in between. This angle right here is probably the perfect. Yep, you can see it go right through both. Man, what a devastating shot. Still pretty tame though compared to the damage on the chipmunks and just wait until the end to see what I mean. <laughs> this actually happens a lot. It's just their nerves kind of tightening up and their super sharp claws digging into that soft wood. This double tap was definitely acorn cop level shooting skill. Uh, I went from high forehead and then took it all the way down to the hip joint on the follow-up. I uh, definitely need to work on that muzzle control. That old like a 
I do love the illumination on this Delta Striker. It's super simple with just that nice crisp dot uh, for low light situations like this. And that shot, eh, you know what, that one was a little bit high. But when you see bubble gum like that, it's nighty night. Next up, a double feature with Dumb and Dumber here with a pair of shots that turn dinner into a splash zone for the GoPros downrange. Man, watch these different angles. Just the energy dumps are crazy. You'll get your first glimpse of the second one running up the tree right there. Once that first one dropped, that second one went up and down real quick and then made a terrible decision. Those peanuts were just too good. And then once he settled in, I squeezed off another round. And this one just absolutely soaked the GoPro off to its right. Ah, that one left a little bubble gum for us as well, and holy moly, completely soaked the GoPro. If you watch closely, you can just see the pellet fall right there it is, right there. And down there with his buddy for a little forever dirt nap. All right, as promised. Here is that 9 mil versus chipmunk shot I've been teasing. Uh, it's a little summer flashback. I actually found this shot on a GoPro SD card that was sitting in my backpack, but better late than never. So their skulls are actually a lot thinner, resulting in something slightly more than a flesh wound. Oof. Now, that is about as humane as it gets. Graphic, sure, but that's reality. As you know it, this channel is always about education, as I showcase a humane and safe alternative for pest control. It's definitely getting near that time for a new table for one as we inspect it a little bit, but for now, a little rinse will do the trick. If you enjoyed that clip, you should click this thumbnail to see the full video.